Okay, thank you very much. So, a bit of experiences from Zambia. So, just to mention that rapid response teams exist at uh, uh, facility level, district, province, and national level. And coupled to this, uh, we have the epidemic preparedness and response committees at uh, uh, all the levels. So, uh, in Zambia, um, we established the Zambia National Public Health Institute in uh, 2016, and uh, it operates under six strategic pillars. So, <clears throat> all the functions of surveillance and disease intelligence are with the, the Zambian National Public Health Institute, and it is this pillar that informs the epidemic preparedness and response. So, you can see we have the FIOC, and um, uh, we also have the coordin uh, coordination functions of the EPR and rapid response teams. So we also have the workforce development and capacity building. So we, we are supporting the districts also to, uh, to make sure they can respond to outbreaks in a faster manner. Uh, just to give you an example of a snapshot, that we are also using the, rap uh, <coughs> the incident management system. And in the last outbreak, which was a big outbreak, this is how we employed the incident management system in the country. So each of the key people responsible for the command and the management uh, were part of the structure and their phone numbers given. And on a daily basis, we had management uh, by objectives. So you can see I was the operations chief under the IMS structure and coordinating clinical, laboratory, outbreak investigation, surveillance, and the environmental health. So these are some of the uh, quick uh, analysis that we are able to do in the IMS, environmental and human samples. But just to highlight that also part of the response is we are training <coughs> our rapid response teams to be able to do uh, mapping of uh, cholera cases as one way of uh, uh, making quick decisions on a daily basis. So you can see we are able to map out the outbreak in the initial cases. And uh, we could also monitor how it spread throughout Lusaka. And then afterwards, we were able to say, how do we zone in within Lusaka as which ones are the hotspots so that we can uh, influence our decisions. Then once we started achieving a bit of control, there were floods. And when there were floods again, the outbreak increased. So you can see the last control, the cases reducing and eventually it became localized to one area. The areas that uh, were hot were all cleared. And finally, there was no outbreak. So this is just to give you an example of how we managed uh, cholera using the, that IMS structure. The risk factors are similar to other pl uh, places, um, but just to show you that access to water and sanitation still remain key in most of these outbreaks. We had a bit of flooding, and areas that had pit latrines were event evidently having more uh, cases, especially children. There was too much water, and children were playing in these areas. Again, trading in certain places, sanitation, and fishing camps. One of the key areas difficult to manage, so our IMS was still able to uh, control the cholera in the camps. So <clears throat> one, one key lesson from our management is that uh, one of the key interventions was access to safe water. Uh, but we, we, can see <coughs> we can see that we had high-level support and we actually uh, <coughs> implemented statutory instruments because the cases were just too much and we couldn't manage to intervene with certain key interventions. So we had to involve the political leadership to come in and help in the support. Uh, so this is just to show you, this is our Minister of Health, this is the President. He also joined in the response so that uh, together we can actually fight. So this is one of the ministers from environmental health. They are all in the field to help us in the response to the outbreak. And eventually the military also came in and supported the response. So this is just to show you <coughs> that uh, it is really a multi-sectoral approach and the Zambia has committed through that high-level political leadership to really end cholera. So during the response, you can see what was the problem. We were able to give almost 300 uh, uh, tanks to the people and monitoring the, the quality of the water on a daily basis to ensure that people are receiving quality drinking water. And you can see all these areas are water tanks where we distributed emergency water. And these were influenced by the initial hotspot mapping 
of the new cases where they were coming from and we were able to put water afterwards we cleared all the cases so that's the example from from zambia and uh you can see after cleaning up zambia really looked clean like it's in london <laughs> yeah. And this is some of some of the responses in the fishing camps where we had to use helicopters to go and reach these people. After reaching them out, they were able to distribute chlorine also in those uh, fishing camps. Then finally, we also gave the OCV and it really helped in the response. This is the Honorable Minister of Health giving the OCV and also drinking to make sure that the people uh, uh, know that it's safe. If the minister can drink, then they can all drink. So this is partly <coughs> the support that we got at national level. And during the outbreak, we also wrote some papers and published. So you can see people were able to learn from this cholera outbreak and uh, probably guide in future uh, actions. And other studies were still uh, going on. Just to highlight also part of the response Zambia also co-sponsored with Haiti the resolution to end cholera. But you see, Zambia was very ambitious and says, us will end it by 2025. So how are we going to do this? A good snapshot. So you see, big investments, which cost a lot of money, upgrading of slums, local government, water capacity uh, enhancement, health for all in agenda, uh, agenda uh, social mobilization, reinforcing surveillance, preparedness and response. Uh, among the key interventions. So thank you very much. <laughs>